Welcome back everyone, Jose to one Crisis here and today we're playing some more Grand Prix World 2001 where um, they're in the championship, two wins so far, so far is a good year but I, it, I feel it could have been better or well it could be better. So last time around German Grand Prix Alonso went on and won and it could have been a one too but Oliver Pani set his stars on fire. Um, Ace is not due to order related reasons, although I do not understand if... Uh, I still don't quite under understand the mechanics behind tire overheating, but I really doubt that it is related to the top speed slider being too high. I think it's just... Um, Panis got unlucky and his tires got set on fire, and I might have over uh, underfueled him a bit, which meant I had to reduce his ratings so that he made it to the end of the stint, which cost him against Raikkonen. He could have had a podium, but I did make that slight mistake. Then in Hungary, we had uh, the pit stop glitch. Uh, uh, how to put it? The pit stop glitch meant Alonso couldn't get second, and then a mistake meant Panis couldn't get uh, fifth, because he could have, could have gotten fifth, but lost like... Well, maybe he could have just gotten se uh, sixth, but... Maybe he could have been ahead of Kulhar. Any point. Uh, lost some points in Hungary. And with Ralph winning, that means we are a bit back. Panis is exactly 30 points behind. So if Ralph gets 10 points, he's done. And if Ralph gets 14 points, he is a uh, Alonso is done. But this championship fight is heating up. We definitely can get at least second in the championship. But a win is... It's unlikely. But it's still possible. In the constructors, though, it is even tighter. Williams has uh, uh, fell off a cliff, so I think they won't be a factor anymore. Ferrari leads by 5 points over McLaren and 13 over us. We can definitely win the constructors with relative ease. And let me check the history. We... I don't think we're gonna score more points than in 2003, but our lead driver... I maybe won't have that many points. Like we will see, but there are there are not that many points available, are they? I mean, we could get one twos from here on, and uh, okay, maybe we could beat our previous score of 100 and how many was 158? 59, 159. We could beat that. It's close. I'm very difficult, but we could. And Alonso could get more than 99 points on this one. No, he can't. So we uh, Alonso's not beating his previous record. So we're just gonna do what we can, which is getting the constructors. So what did I do? I did testing, of course. The cars are totally clean, and I have just three percent available because I did my testing, of course. Full. Um, this is the program. Full setup, but I have four points remaining for a reason. I'll show you that in a moment. Full research. Full engine. Tires are already full. We don't have to do any more tire development. The research, of course, is going to remain there because I'm going to, of course, do full model design for the new rear wing. Then I'm going to progress that. That's just to speed up the upgrade. You know how this goes. Uh, we're not doing technology because nothing is going to carry over to 2005 other than the hydraulics. So they are already maxed out. Nothing else to do there. We are doing traction control and I'm going to try to run level 5 traction control for, for Italy even though it will not be FIA approved and I will show you how to do that in a moment but in any case I did development of the engine we had the 2E engine way over here we didn't have the 3A spec engine I expected to have even though we were not gonna use it it looked like this I took three points of heat to fill up the weight bar and put response and this will be the engine that we'll be using for the remaining three races of the year that is italy europe and japan the 3a unit just took too long to get here so we're just gonna run with that we're low on spares but we should be fine after this race so belgium this is pretty quick introduction actually speaking of um uh, not that fast we need to see who has auto gears like not auto gears but like active level three you don't think anyone has active suspension level three no, no one. That's a shame because I would have liked to have active level 3. And in fact, let me check. No one in the news. Uh, oh, right. I, I, that, that allowed me to remember something. 
has not lived up to his promises here. Oh, come on! But I'm gonna show you something that I did in the previous episode, but um, the audio cut out and everything got ruined, so there is that. No one was using active, which is a shame, so I'm gonna let um, my boys look at Ferrari's active suspension. I'm pretty sure they just have it at level 2. It's around there some. Okay, there is, there is level 2. Maybe they have level 3, but haven't deployed it? I don't know. So, what I looked at uh, the previous episode was um, the team sponsors and the engine suppliers. And I talked about that, but then my uh, microphone decided to betray me. This time it won't do that, so I will be able to talk about this. So, Prost is still running that Marlboro sponsorship, that might change next year. Uh, McLaren is still running that Mile 7 for 2005, and uh, West is leaving Ferrari to go with Williams and for two years, dang. Compact Minardi is getting a team, a team sponsor, Compact. I wonder if that will improve their performance. Ferrari going down to Lucky Strike, uh, Sauber going Benson Hedges, and Benetton going Red Bull. So the biggest lo uh, losers here are BAR, Arrows, uh, yeah, BAR, Arrows, not Benetton because they have a deal, uh, Jaguar, because of course Jaw Jaguar always losing, and Jordan. Those four do not have a deal, so they'll have to do with a cash sponsor. Unfortunately, neither McLaren nor Ferrari nor Williams uh, are out of sponsors, so they, they, they will have cash. As for engine, and this is the interesting one. So, Ferrari and Mercedes, no one, simply because their R&D rating is so low, which is a shame. But, Renault, we have Prost as the partner team. Uh, sadly, Renault doesn't offer work deals. That will only happen if either the cash rating or the R&D rating increase by one. <coughs> Excuse me. Next we have BMW, who has gone to BMW Sauber, which, you know, is canon in real life. Didn't become a thing in 2005, but in any case. And Benetton also goes BMW as the partner team. Honda, now it's Williams Honda, which actually happened in real life as well, although it wasn't that successful thanks to multiple mistakes by the team and drivers. Also we have Minardi Honda, so they lose the works deal, they go, yeah. Asia Tech, they only have arrows, so they went back to square one. Cosworth, they have McLaren, Ferrari, and BAR with McLaren, the works team, which they were the R this year. So, yeah, assuming they don't change performance, like again, Ferrari and Mercedes are the best engine suppliers. If this wasn't a French-centered playthrough, I will go for those. Renault is underpowered. But overall, good ratings. BMW, over, uh, very good power. Reliability is a bit of a concern, but I don't care about no reliability. Honda doesn't have reliability or solid power. It's just there. Uh, Asia Tech sucks. Cosworth, fairly versatile, even if it doesn't have reliability. I will, I could work with the Cosworth. I would really like the Cosworth. Anyway, Belgium. Now for series this time around. The, I'm going with the... And uh, no, the 1F or the 1E. The 1F engine for this one simply because of the extra response. That's gonna mean less mistakes. 1F. And for the setup, I'm gonna go this. Two points in the rain, one point in tarmac, and four points in the reserve. And those points in reserve will be used on. Italy because we want to win this championship and for that we're gonna need to prepare our car for the most difficult races like well Italy but for Spa, Spa is not that difficult for us we're gonna do one tarmac point to make the tires last a slightly bit more and and two rain points because if it rains we need to have a good car of course increase this and decrease this as per usual and down Confirm the orders, confirm the setup, confirm the assembly, that's confirmed, save the game, and let's head into it. Belgique. Okay, it's gonna be very dry, 
uh, cold temperature, low wind speed, we should be perfectly fine. We have the best possible tires, we have the soft tires, we we could probably get pole on this one, but it will depend on what the other guys do. We probably will be like second row or something. So let's get in there. Well, guess who got for pole? position. It is David Coulthard again by nearly four tenths of a second over Kimi Raikkonen. Rubens Barrichello is third with Ralf Schumacher fourth and then we have us. I wanted a second row lockout. We couldn't quite get it. We almost get a third row lockout with Alonso fifth but then Pedro de la Rosa somehow put his car on sixth. Panis is seventh which I mean, fine, but he's three tenths away from Alonso. Then you have the underperformance of Fisichella in eight and the underperformance of Mark Webber in ninth. I mean, <clears throat> 1.3 seconds. That's 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 scary. It's basically the same thing with Ralph Schumacher and Fisichella, eight tenths. Then you have Frenz and Montoya, Verstappen, and the rest of them. Again, Michael qualified last. Jeez. Anyway, also they are two seconds of the Minardis, just just Jaguar. Probably Minardi, but I'm not great. Speaking of, <clears throat> actually, I did put the performance chart in between the uh, at the beginning of the episode. I did forgot to mention it, but I'm pretty sure editor Jose put the performance chart up there. Anyway, um, fifth and seventh. This has to turn into first and second, preferably, and I think we can do that, especially if it rains. This is not rain. Um, it rained in qualifying, but it did not affect the qualifying result, so there's that. Back to the 1G engine, so we can totally push the engine as much as we want. Soft tires, of course, and the strategy. For this strategy, <clears throat> according to my calculations, the soft tire will be faster as long as the stint is shorter than 19 laps. Um, for that reason, I'm going to push this stint beyond 19 laps to 24, to be specific. Five, uh, tar sets 5 and 6 and for Panis it will be on actually let's give Panis the longer strategy by one lap but it will be enough why 24 laps well 24 laps on the first thing so that the second stint is 20 laps and the well the tires the tires actually survive you know what let me just 19 there and I also can say on the 24 and 20 straight up one stopper assuming you man you do not overheat the tire this should get us a one through uh, a one two or a one three one of those i would prefer the one two but uh, anything can happen in, in grand prix racing so let's get in there of course saving the game max this out lower this to four max this out lower this to four we won't miss the race start don't worry there we go just in time I want a good start, boys. Don't drop back. Please. They did. <laughs> okay, at the very least, it's not that far back. 7th and 8th, I guess, is a more representative qualifying position from... I don't know. We're climbing up, though. We are climbing down, though. Alonso, come on now. Okay, at the very least, Spanish is 5th, but I would prefer Alonso to not lose that many positions. It's a uh, cool tar from physical... How in the world? I mean... Grand Prix World's race starts are a thing of beauty. At the very least, we are ahead of Ralph Schumacher, who is our biggest threat in this episode. He cannot win. Like, if he gets 10 points, that's a uh, panis out of the championship, and he's our number one. Ideally, he wins this championship, but with the way things are looking, it is unlikely. Also, we cannot push the tires too much by going too high on the braking, because then we will not make it on the one stop the tires on 5-5 five, five acceleration 5-5 five, uh, five acceleration and 5 braking barely can make it to halfway so we need to be extremely careful with the orders we give and we need to be you know moving a bit more along so stop any traffic there you go he's 10th but he needs to be like you know 6th Still, we will be a bit slow because we are heavy with fuel, but um, the fact that we're slowing down Ralph is good. But again, um, I mentioned that, well, I have mentioned again, if Ralph ten, gets 10 points, that's uh, Panis out of the championship, but that's assuming Panis wins every race from now on, which um, possibly will not happen. So, yeah, 
and again, the 14th and Alonso is out is because, well, if Alonso wins every race, that's gonna be it. He lost position. Pan is... Okay, it's just Mark Webber. We're gonna get Mark Webber later on. It's, 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 it's fine. Let's watch the end of this lap before I cut the, the, the recording. Alonso can get that, man. Come on. Oh, I see. Let's just... Let's just... If, if, if there's a crash, there's a crash. Who cares? Well, I do care. But if it takes out... Oh, God. Great. He lost a bunch of pace. I will be fine. I hope. Right, so let's drop that down because he's not in he's not in range to attack Ralph on this one, but he will be, do not worry. So it's cool her from Fizzy, from Raikkonen, Rubens, Weber, Panis, Ralph, Frensen, and Alonso. We definitely need an upgrade for 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 Italy. And good thing the upgrade will be coming up soon. So I got the recording here until interesting events happen, so I will she I will I will she. Dang it, English is hard. I will see you in a minute. Or a few seconds for you. Just coming in here real quick to show that... Um, Panis got himself in trouble by setting his tire temperature to 5. Which is not good. Because his tire durability now will be a bit compromised. Usually we will be able to make it, make it to like lap 27 or something like that with no issue. But now he's only like... I don't know, maybe lap 22 or something? Which is not where I wanted to get to. I wanted to get a bit farther. Alonso's tires are wearing out at about the same rate, so he should be fine. <sighs> but in any case, um, I try to curb the situation by lowering the curb usage to 1. Maybe that'll make him be less aggressive and cool down the tire, but overall it's just making, a, making him a bit slower than he could be. I just need to try to find a way to make him lower that tire temperature, otherwise um, his temperature will be over. Well, he's at least helping by keeping Ralph Schumacher stuck, which is our main threat. Not that Ralph and not that DC and Rubens are in threats, but he's the biggest threat because he's leading the championship. So at the very least he's contributing to that. I would like him to win, but with this tire situation it might be a bit tougher. Okay, this race, is, since the point situation is so critical, I will be doing a bit more updates in this race. So, uh, Rubens beat a while ago. He's all the way back here, as you can see. So, he is likely on an early two-stop or a three-stop. Three stops do not work here. In real life, they will be kind of decent. But in this game, they are not a factor. And Williams is not going to be a factor in this race. So, Kimi Pitting, as you can see there. Williams is not a factor now, so... And Ralph is not a factor either. Yes! Yes, okay. Actually, you do not bother anymore about... Heinz Harris is not a factor either. Okay. So, we got rid of Ralph Schumacher. We, do, we got rid of the Williams. Now it's the, the McLarens and Fisichella for us to beat. And um, any other potential one-stopper that decides to be a threat. If Kulhar is a one-stopper, I'm going to be very annoyed. Well, at the very least, we should outscore McLaren, if that's the case, because... Oh, no, okay, okay, just never mind. So the only possible one-stopper now is Mark Webber. So we disposed of Ralph, we disposed of Rubens, of Kimi, we disposed of uh, Fizzy, of... Uh, we got rid of Coulter as well, so we are well on our way to a 1-2, and I need... Well, Webber's out, so we are in the lead now. This was just a, a quick update how, on how, like, Rubens went to pit and, well, went to pit. But now it is an update on how we got into the lead by doing absolutely nothing, except one stop. I hope we're actually fast enough to hold on to these positions, though. At the very least, Alonso is working like a proper number two in that he doesn't have enough pace to keep up with Panis, even though he should. He is just not on it today. But at the very least, Panis is coming back, and unfortunately, track is getting a bit hotter. It's not going towards the rain situation, which is a shame. And even more important for us, Ralph is all the way down here in uh, what position is that? Is 12th. The Williams are gone. So yeah, we could we could get out of this one with 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 excellent with an excellent result. And unfortunately, Fizzy is right up. 
uh, F uh, Alonso's gearbox. So yeah, Alonso is definitely a number two today. And depending on how things go, we might have to keep Panis as the number one driver throughout the entire thing. I mean, he's our number one driver, but Alonso was ahead in the points. But looking how far how, how far back Alonso is, we might have to end up using Panis as the lead driver. Of course, the only complication is Panis's um, fuel uh, tire situation, but we will figure out and out. So it is Alonso's in lap, and well, Sarah's and going into the pits. It happens that Fisi was on a three stop. He went to pit a while ago, and thanks to the actions of one stopping hero, John Alesi, who's all the way back here, um, he got the pressure off of, Alesi, of Alonso by passing multiple times. Fisichella, they had a bit of a fight and took a bit of pressure off Alonso, who's now trying to lap back markers. I doubt he's gonna win this race. He did uh, some extra braking because, of course, I needed him to uh, pass traffic. I'm gonna take down the push order, even though he could be faster with the order. I'm gonna take it off simply because I want him to like pit and load the least amount of fuel possible. There he goes, Alonso into the pit, loads of fuel. And now time for the half race report because we are at the effective middle point of the race and, you know, this man's gonna pit. Robins is all the way over there. Okay, it's understandable that PC got the position because he's three stopping and he took less time into the pit. So, the current order is Oliver Panis, take that off, get into there again, okay. Oliver Panis, David Coulthard, Kimi Raikkonen, Giancarlo Fisichella, Rubens Barrichello, Raul Schumacher, and Stefan Sarasen. Now David Coulthard is going to get into the lead of the race, simply because, of course, I forgot to take the order off of Panis, but I guess he should be fine. He needs to push anyway. So the new order actually is David Coulthard, Oliver Panis, Kimi Raikkonen, Giancarlo Fisichella, Fernando Alonso, Rubens Barrichello, Raul Schumacher and Stefan Sarasen of all people. Although I think Sarasen is going to lose the position to Jean Alesi, because Alesi I think is one stopping. However, even though these positions seem a bit dire, they are not the end because Coulthard still needs to make a stop, Rubens still needs to make a stop, Fisi needs to make a third stop, and the guys behind Alonso also need to make another stop. That includes Sarasan, but doesn't include Alesi. And Alesi is not threat right now, so it's all good. Also, since his tires already cooled down, let's uh, increase that curve usage. And we should be able to keep it up there throughout the remainder of the race. He should have enough pace to keep up with uh, Coulthard and, you know, retake the lead of the race at this point. The smart thing to do right here will be to have Alonso win because he's like uh, our best driver in terms of points, but Alonso is just out of this one. Like right now he's he should be closer to Panis, he had a better qualifying, he was better overall in Saturday, but then he was nowhere, he is not right now, so um, if we really wanted to prioritize him he should have been closer, but he isn't. And even though he's still gonna be the best driver, assuming we get a 1-2 with Panis winning and Alonso second, he's still gonna be the better driver in the points. We absolutely need to keep um, Alonso ahead. I'm thinking about a bit of strategy, and you see that right behind behind us is Barrichello, followed by Ralph. I'm gonna do a bit of trickery here. I'm gonna have Alonso not defend as hard, so like remove the order. For the simple objective that I want Rubens to pass him, but uh, there we go, but not Ralph. What's that going to achieve? What's that going to achieve is that Ralph is behind Rubens, and we need to compromise Ralph as much as possible. Rubens is still going to be behind Alonso, that's obvious because of the one stop, but I want Ralph to lose as many points as possible so that Panis has their best shot at the championship. Also, this harms. Uh, Ferrari a bit because he's gonna uh, a Ferrari's gonna finish behind a Williams and Williams is nearly out of the championship race uh, constructors championship race compared to us so yeah if I can do anything to harm Ralph I'm gonna do it anyway this has been the half race report a bit long uh, actually about as long as it usually is I only have a bit more cuts in the race because um, events are happening so let me cut the recording until the next important event happens which will probably be cool hearts uh, pit stop. So, let's see you there. 
Well, my little uh, strategy gambit with um, Al Alonso letting Rubens through didn't quite work for the simple reason that uh, Ralph did the job himself by pitting earlier than Rubens. So, yeah, that little trick wasn't really necessary. I saw Fizzy pit, I think. Yeah, Fizzy did pit. And a Jaguar pit back there. That's a bit annoying because it was stopping Alonso. We are into a little bit of a situation where Alonso and Panis are going to be tied again because uh, Coulthard is going to be ahead of Alonso. Like, most likely that will be the end result, which is annoying, but we just can't get a 1-2, man. And we desperately need it for the constructors. And actually for the drivers too, because, well, the least points everyone else scores, the better for us. Still, um, we're going to try it. Also, now that I think of it, look, where... Ralph is out of the points. This needs to hold. Please, this needs to hold in terms of... Well, not quite. If, if this equal DNF, that would be nice, but... This needs to hold in terms of where this man is. At least ninth. If he finishes ninth, that will be music to my ears. Okay, I saw Coulthard going into the pit, so this is the time. And we have light rain. That... That cool save Alonso if it turns into a full-on wet situation. Panis is going to win this race now, but we have the... Okay, thank you for getting that way. We have the issue of Alonso, who is... Well, he's doing a Panis, basically. Panis in the last few, last few races has not shown up, and... Yeah, he's struggling. And I think Ralph went back into the points, or he's gonna go back into the points at this rate. I do not rate. But yeah, I don't think it's 11, well, basically 10 laps to go. I don't think Alonso is going to be able to catch cooled hard. But if the weather changes, which now that I think of it, I doubt it will because it's quite late in the going. But if the weather were to change, maybe something could happen. Maybe he could, like... BS his way up to Coulthard. But then again, if the weather were to change, maybe Ralph can BS his way up to points, which will be worse. So, yeah. For now, Alonso is going to be third, assuming Rubens actually has to pay again. Let me check something. Rubens might be on a one stop, or I do not remember when he did, but that 12. Tells me it was a long stop. Maybe he's on a one stop. Maybe I made a mistake. Ooh, okay. So, well. Let's hope a Bray good things happen, right? Uh, never mind. There he goes. Into the pit. You had me worried there, boy. Okay, Alonso's gonna be third at the very least. He's gonna get a podium. And freaking Ralph is gonna move up another position because Irvine went into the pits. Oh no, Alesi is there. Alesi is our savior. He's stopping Ralph from getting points. I just need you, boy, John, or Franz to hold there so you ha so you can give Panis the best possible chances at this championship. Come on, man, you can do it. You can do it. So, final lap of the race, and this time around my mix should be recording. I already did this one, and uh, my mix decided, you know what, I'm not going to help you on this one. And... I have to re-record this one, so we are here. Anyway, um, the one stop, of course, showing its superiority on the short races in Belgium. Well, here we are in Germany. The one stop was excellent. The zero stop should have been even better, but um, Pani set his tires on fire, which wasn't ideal. And we have no backup plan on that one. But on this one, the one stop, excellent. And it's going to lead into Oliver Pani's winning the Belgium Grand Prix from, unfortunately, David Coulthard. Uh, sadly, Alonso, who will finish this race on third, uh, did not have a good showing. Like, he should have been better, he should have been second, but his pace was just, just, just wasn't there. He did what Panis did in the last few races, where he just didn't show up in Sundays. But, you know what? Third, third place is gonna be enough. Also, Panis gets the fastest lap. 57-0, dear lord. Who is right behind me? Right, behi right behind him is Kimi Raikkonen. Solid result from Kimi. Then we have Fisichella on uh, the third for fifth. Rubens on sixth. Then you're gonna you're gonna see the, the results. But you know what? This could have been better by you know Alonso being up there. But you know what? 
This is an excellent result for the championship. So it's Panis from Kultar and Alonso also on the podium. Like I mentioned, he should have been second, but uh, third will cut it. Third, I think, will be enough. Fourth will be Kimi Raikkonen. Fifth is Giancarlo Fisichella. Sixth is Rubens Barrichello. Seventh, Stefan Sarasen putting the VAR on the points. And Jean Alesi putting it on the point. That's over, that, 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 that's over, man. Raul Schumacher is ninth and out of the points, which is excellent for both drivers and constructors because Ferrari do not get that many points. Let's see what else we have. We have Irvine in 10th, Bernoulli in 11th, Frensen in 12th, and the rest of them, as you can see. Man, Bertie beats Michael Schumacher. That's, that's, that's rare to see. That's unusual, but, well, it happened. Button and Trulli, of course, the last of the F1 drivers. I consider Jaguar an F2 team at this point. It's Formula 3000 or GP2. It's one of those at this point. I, I, I'm not sure which one it is, but it's one of those. Weber DNF with hydraulics and Verstappen DNF with uh, pit stop issues, so there is that. The championship, the driver's championship got juicy because um, Panis and Alonso both are 20 points behind, but we are gonna prioritize Panis because he's the number one and he has better wet weather ratings, which are gonna come into play maybe next race and definitely in the final episode of this season. So Ralph stays in 78 points, Coulthard is only 7 points behind, Barrichello is 15 and Panis is 20. So again, even if Panis wins all of these races, if Ralph gets 10 points, championship is over, which that's precisely the reason why I did that little strategy trick with Alonso, so that he let Ruben through, who is not that big of a threat, but kept Ralph behind because it was better for the championship. So yeah, we need to we need to keep winning. Ra uh, Panis needs to go on a win streak. And the constructors is even juicier because we're an, eff an effective tie for the lead. So for Eric, 117 points, one point of difference between the number twos in McLaren and Prost. McLaren, of course, hold the actual second place because they have more wins. They have the tiebreaker, but we have the momentum. We can win the Constructors' Championship, and I think we're going to take the lead of the Constructors after the Italian Grand Prix, still in it right in front of the Tifosi. And Williams is effectively out of this one because they are uh, 16 points away from the lead, which you will believe that's not much considering we were 13 points behind, but um, things are gonna get tougher for them. And now, instead of continuing doing my usual work of explaining things around, I'm gonna cut the recording here and check if my mic is actually recording because I remember what happened in the previous episode and I don't want it to happen again because it actually happened and I had to record this again. So let me go check the mic, uh, the recording to see if it's actually working. Well, guess what? It is working. So let's focus on what's important, the emails. Uh, we made a bit of a loss because I built a bunch of cars. You might have seen it when there was no audio, bunch of cars. Start working in commercial, that's okay. We, okay, or excessive wear. Spa always generates a lot of wear, so it's fine. No, you cannot help with tire testing because we're done in terms of tire testing. We should get it approved, but we will not get traction control approved. It's it's unnecessary. Just the usual stuff. New engine, a TAB advantage that's going to come with us for 2005. We will use that. Gotta keep Marlboro happy because they are bringing a ton of uh, a ton of cash, and that advantage will be fine. Don't worry. Uh, no one, no one needs to work on that. Found active suspension on the Ferraris. Let me let me check that real quick. Active suspension, but still about why in the That's disgusting Ferrari. Anyway, I'm not gonna focus that much on the other teams now. I'm just gonna focus on car security because I think we are pretty good in terms of driver rates. Just gonna keep uh, focus on Williams because they might have something good in the news. Uh Panis race win, happy with Turbo wants to do better, and you should have. Uh, Pros had a great race. Ferrari must not be. What in the world are you babbling about? <laughs> Certain to win this, con this year's Constructors Championship. They are in the lead by one point. They're about to lose it. Uh, Jordan Michelin. Oh, that's something I talked about in the previous one. Jordan had not signed anyone, but now it's Michelin. So the only team with Bridgestone tires is Jaguar. 
man, I man, I hope no serious event happened that ends up driving everyone away from Michelin. I hope not. So Panis gets the fastest lap as well. Uh, sponsor news. Ferrari has traction control of some kind. Paul Stoddard. Why would you give it to Ron Dennis? Uh, yeah, of course, it's fine because we got uh, that uh, aid from Ferrari, but it's useless for us. Um, let's see. Here, Elf is fine, but I need you to talk with Marlboro now because um, Marlboro is important. They give us a lot of cash. And can I move some points away from? Yes, I can. Up to there and put more points into VIP. Build a few spares. Uh, let's build up to eight spares. That should be just enough for what we're going to do. Which is, of course, doing the, the, the entire thing and have its own spares in reserve. I'm going to construct this aid. I'm going to construct that level of traction control and I'm going to use it for Italy. And let me check real quick. Uh, not that. The information about the circuits. Uh, Italy? has very low tarmac rating and that's the whole reason why I brought some points over from Belgium so I can put those points into tarmac but Luxembourg Luxembourg is fine Japan is fine okay we're only gonna need that traction control for Italy and I need to be very careful because if the FIA discover that we're running traction control we're gonna get banned and of course that's going to end our championship hopes and I definitely don't need that happening so yeah Research, construct component, we will have the AM, let me count, this will be the AP07 Mod 5. Mod 5? Um, editor Jose, just put the correct number for the AP05, oh, AP07 on this one, thank you. And there, so we have level 5 traction control, although it's no FIA approved, we will use it for uh, Italy. And we have a new rear wing, which means it's gonna cut on the under three fast corners issue that caused us grief in Germany. And we're gonna put those points into tarmac because we need those tires to last. Anyway, what else do we need to do here? Of course, uh, prepare the next test program and repair the cars. That I'm gonna do when I look at the spreadsheet. So I cut the recording here again. I will come back to you when I have done the entirety of the testing. So I will be right back. So I have returned and it is a different day and I'm a bit tired because I just did uh, some exercise and trying to do exercise now, but that's besides the point. Um, I did the usual, I did testing. Here's the program, 199 miles with this setup, this driver configuration and the cars are perfectly fine. So no issue there. All of the 2005 cars are also built, which I did in the previous episode. And what we got was full setup which I invested on this one. I will return to this in a moment. Uh, full setup, full development, full research, and full, uh, did I do engine? Yes, I did engine, although I don't think I'm going to use it, and I will show you why in a moment. Uh, we're gonna do development. There is another issue on the car. I actually forgot about this, dang it. Um, I'll set it up in between, like, when I hit the correct button. I will do the seamless transition, anyway. Um, oversteering fast co in slow corners, which is not an issue at all, because, well, the only remaining tracks are, of course, Italy, which is very fast, you can just see it by the layout. Luxembourg, which is just about enough to be considered a fast track, 6 points in speed. And Japan, which is also a fast track with 7 points of speed. So this issue right here is no issue at all, but I'm gonna try to fix it so that the final car that we employ in Japan is the best possible car. So. Let's do development. I will put the correct percentage uh, in a moment. And I'm also gonna start developing active suspension because, well, we have the level five traction control and we're gonna use it just for the Italian Grand Prix, just so that the tires last that bit longer. That could be enough to give us a win, but I also need to develop this. And throughout 2005, our objective, aside from getting these upgrades, uh, these driver rates to level four, it's to get an FIA approved traction control level 5. There's an airplane going around. Let's just wait for it to pass. There it goes. Okay, I'm going to get traction control level 5. That's going to be one of my development objectives for 2005, simply because the tires last so much with level 5 traction control. So there's that. 
um, let me show you the 3A specification of the engine. There is actually let me show you, show it to you here. Let's put panis on the 2A and Alonso on the 3A so you can see the differences. So the differences are that we have more heat and more response and it will be good to develop this particular engine but um, we will only get two remaps and that's not even enough to put few, uh, full power on this engine. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna stick to the 2F specification for the entirety of this episode and the next uh, ep for the next few races as well. Of course, our tires are perfect and our fuel elf has not brought a single upgrade, which is a shame. Uh, not much talk here. So let's focus on the Italian Grand Prix. I'm gonna... I consider it dropping the pit stop prior effort to 4 so I can put more on car security and the reason for that is of course I'm gonna bring an illegal driver aid which might be like the worst possible thing I could do because we could get disqualified but we, I am gonna, I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna risk it just for that extra bit of tire durability. So I'm not gonna run it in qualifying because the performance increase is there but it's not that significant. But in the race I'm definitely gonna run the level 5 traction control. In any case, um, both of you get the 2F engine which is our most reliable engine at this point or best engine overall because it has good response, high weight and high power. That's everything you want from an, from an engine. And um, soft tires because of course that's the best tire we have available. The hard tire is good but not as good as the soft. Even though with the traction control at the full tarmac it is effectively indestructible, the hard tire I mean, but the soft is still better. So, full tarmac and the reason for that is I don't want the tires to wear out. They definitely need to last. We're gonna run the one stop and the one stop will work around this track, but for that the soft needs to last. Of course the usual orders which, other than top speed going down, which we don't need top speed when we go out on track, we need it on the hot lap. This is fine, confirm the orders, confirm everything, save the game, do the modifications to the uh, design percentages, and off we go. Right, Italia. It's gonna be dry, um, actually, now that I think of it, I hope it doesn't rain, because I think the best weather, weather driver among us is Ralph Schumacher not panis and I didn't put points in rain of course it could benefit us but it could end our championship host because panis uh, because Ralph winning ends us so there's that 2F engine of course and no traction control because again I don't want to get disqualified in qualifying if it's in the race I we got what we deserve but not in qualifying that that I cannot afford that so in we go And it is Fernando Alonso once again taking pole position from Olivier Panis for a Prost 1-2. Basically the best possible result. For once I have seen how the performance chart looks for the Italian Grand Prix. This is as close as we have been to the top 3 and it certainly shows. The soft tires definitely help us to get pole. And now they're gonna help us get a 1-2 I'd hope. Or at least a win for Panis. Third is David Coulthard, very, very close to getting pole as well, or at the very least a front row, 31 thousandths of a second behind Panis. Then you have Fisichella, who is, uh, has a bigger gap. Fisichella, Ralph Schumacher, Kimi Raikkonen, Mark Webber, Rubens Barrichello, all the way down in eighth. Then you have Montoya, Pedro de la Rosa, Heinz Alfredsen, Enrique Bernoldi, and the rest of them. The only one not participating in this race is uh, Gaston Mazzacane, since he did not go, uh, do a good lap in the uh, in the dry. It rained a few times. Ralph Schumacher was at risk. Maybe we were getting a, uh, an extra Ferrari international assistance moment, but he ended up doing a, a solid qualifying run. But Matsakane did not, so he's out. Of, uh, he he won't compete. Dry conditions, fairly cold, high wind speed. We should be okay. The 2F engine is there, and of course. We are risking everything by putting the level 5 traction control. We should be okay for one race, but this is the only race where we're gonna use it. 
Next year, I will, like I mentioned, we'll try to legalize uh, traction control level 5 after getting level 4 for everything else here. But for now, we must use it for this one, just to make sure the one-stop works even better than it should. So, both Alonso and Panis are getting a very simple strategy. Up to lap 31 for Alonso, up to lap 33 for Panis. They will go... No, actually, let's make it a bit shorter for Alonso. 5 and 6, and for Panis, he will go all the way up to lap 33. Nearly a one-stopper. Maybe this is a mistake, and... I'm having a bit of regret with this strategy now. Let's make it one lap shorter so that he's not super overfueled. But uh, the middle point is lap 27. I usually add 10% to that, so lap 32 does make sense. We could go to like lap. Uh, we could actually go to lap 33, and the soft will be a bit faster than the hard by that point. So in this configuration, we should be perfectly fine. Okay, this is a critical race, and since Europe and Japan are races where it tends to rain a lot. Panis is going to be our number one driver. Of course, he's a number one driver. We hired him for that. But he's going to be our number one driver throughout this race. So Alonso will have to do everything possible to support him. Okay? Let's get in there. Try to win this one. Hopefully bad things happen to Ralph as well. Safe. No, 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 no. Don't delete. Safe. Good. And lower that to 4, lower this to 4. I thought I had increased that to 10, now it is to 10. Block, you don't block. Pedro de Rosa fall starts. Okay, we hold on to the 1, 2, and Panis is ahead now, good. Excellent, fantastic. Alonso, your job is to block. You will defend for your life while Panis goes off into the distance. You will do it. You must do it. If Alonso didn't bring his A game on this one, it's not that painful. Dang it, Ralph went up. It's not that painful simply because um, Panis is the one that needs to win, and if Alonso didn't bring his A game, he will just uh, defend for his life. So it is fine. So let's see, Pan is in the lead from Fernando Alonso. It is a pros 1-2 from David Coulthard. I think... Oh, great. There is a little bit of a glitch in this track where the AI can just jump a whole bunch of people here. When you do it, it's great. When you don't do it, uh, things like this happen. Rubens Barrichello now in the lead. Is that Rubens? Yes, that's Rubens. So now we have to run him down because if he's on a... Well, if he's on a one-stop, we are a bit screwed. We will still probably beat him, but I'd rather catch up to him. It's gonna be very difficult though, because, well, we are one stopping. If he's two stopping, then he's not a problem. And if he is three stopping, then we don't have to bother about anything. But the truth is that Rubens Farrakello is now leading this race from Oliver Panis and Fernando Alonso. This will still be a solid result, but I'd rather win this race. Right. <laughs> okay, that 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 removes the issue of having to run down Rubens Farrakello. Back into the lead goes Panis. And Rubens' chances at the championship are growing a bit slimmer now, but it is concerning that he just went on DNF, because that's one less body that we have between uh, Panis and Ralph Schumacher. I would have preferred that he didn't DNF, but it is what it is. It looks like Alonso didn't bring his A game for this episode, but, he, uh, but uh, at least for Sundays anyway, he got pulled. But Panis did, and remember, Panis right now is a bit heavier than Alonso, so... Yeah, in the end it should be fine because look at the significant gap Panis is, uh, is creating right now thanks to Alonso being not as fast as he usually, as his ratings say he should be. So I guess it is okay. Yeah, we should be fine. Anyway, cut the recording here until interesting stuff happens and I hope Alonso does hold on strong. He is doing it so far, but yeah, I hope he holds out. Um, remember the little glitch I mentioned? Well, um... <laughs> that got the Ferraris ahead. Ah... I think both Ferraris managed to overtake Kimi Raikkonen, and that's what got them ahead, and that's... 
precisely the one one thing that I didn't want. This is one of the reasons why I'm not a fan of Monza in this track, simply because you cannot get overtaken for reasons that are not your fault. We... Um, I hope we find a way around this. I don't think we're gonna have... Oh, goodbye, John. Plenty of DNFs DNF so far at the beginning of this race, but I don't think... Dang it, uh, Alonso. I don't think we're gonna have lucky DNFs ahead of us. Like, it will be good for us if Ralph DNF, but I don't think we're gonna have that many lucky DNFs helping us on this particular episode. Okay, update. Uh, David Coulthard pit a lap ago, while Ralph Schumacher pit a lap ago, uh, a moment ago. Which tells us that, well, David, David Coulthard must have have had some sort of issue because he's all the way back there. Yep, yep, yep. David Coulthard had an issue, which means he's gonna be well out of position, but that's not the man I wanted out of position. The one I wanted out of position is Ralph. Still, this is very early for a two-stop, so it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility that they are trying a three-stop, but it looks like, okay, we're back in the lead, but Ferrari is trying a very early two-stop on this race for some unknowable reason. So Ralph is going to be... Um, he is ninth. He's trying to repeat what he did at Spa, which is uh, suck a lot and not being able to get back into the points. But now it's David Coulthard also out of the points and well out of the points. He's 16th right now. Thanks to that issue, of course. Like, I understand, it happens. It happened to us a lot when our pit crew wasn't that good, but at the worst possible time for them. Still, 1-2 for us, and if they are actually trying a 3-stop, which I really doubt, it's most likely a, an early 2-stop, which isn't optimal either way, but um, I'm not sure why you will try an early 2-stop around this track. But they gave us the lead, so let's try to make the most of it. Okay, I think Ralph, Ralph, Ralph is getting sabotaged by his team because he just beat a second time. This is absolutely a freaking three-stopper. He is... Okay, he's safe, so he's still gonna score points. Jensen Button is in the points for Minardi. The home team is gonna score points. Well, probably not, but you know what? Let me hope and get out of the way, backmarkers, please. Anyway, um... I was gonna start the half race report here, but might as well just wait a bit until Alonso is actually just about to pick. So, let me cut ahead. Alright, um, Alonso is just about to pick, so it is the ideal time for the half race report presented by myself, of course. Comment, like, subscribe, um, support this content on coffee if you really so desire, and, well, it's Alonso's pit time, and... We are completely unopposed in this race because the soft tires are very good and the tarmac means look at uh, good. Look at Panis' tires right now. Just three points of condition have been knocked off. There goes Alonso out of the pits. So yeah, the the the, the soft tires have been pr pretty indestructible thanks to the no don't do that you're gonna break something. Thanks to the fact we have put so much focus on keeping the tires safe. If the tarmac points and the level 5 traction control, which again is illegal, I hope we can get away with it. Otherwise, I'm gonna be very sad, but I will have the surf. Anyway, currently the positions are, and they are not virtual, they are actual. Oliver Panis from Fernando Alonso. I Again, I forget to take out the little hot thing from RTSS. Oliver Panis from Fernando Alonso, Kimi Raikkonen, who is on a one stop, I think. Giancarlo Fisichella, Enrique Bernoldi, David Coulthard. Uh, Ralph Schumacher and Tarso Marquez. Behind them are Montoya, Saracen and Weber. Into the pits when Oliver Panis. Let's see his stop. Should be good, should be clean, should be everything and he should be well in the lead of the Italian Grand Prix. Good. Significant gap over Alonso and the reason for that is lap... Uh, where is it? Lap 24 where he overtook someone and... As you can see by the difference between these laps... Um, five seconds faster. Let me tell you, this thing is glitched, and I appreciate it thanks to the fact that it, it, well, it can help us, but you saw how much grief it could cause 
when Rubens went ahead and when the Ferraris went ahead. So it's a blessing in disguise. In any case, Panis right now has the fastest lap, Rubens has the second fastest lap, the Ferraris have the, the third and fourth fastest lap. Eddie Irvine and Tarso Marquez also used that glitch, and after that we have the fastest legal lap, which is Kimi's. So yeah, that, 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 that little jump there is overpowered, but so far, so good. We are completely in the lead, and as long as uh, the car doesn't suffer a random DNF, this is easily a 1-2, because, well, Kimi, I think, is on a one-stop, I don't think, well, maybe he will because he was in Germany. Let me just have Alonso blocking just in case. I don't think Kimi will be that big of a threat, but I'm com covering my bases just in case, and everyone behind him has to beat at least one. So uh, that's, I think, Bernoldi? Yes, Bernoldi. So Fizzy has to beat. Bernoldi has to beat. Coulthard has to beat. Uh, Rauschenmacher, of course, has to beat again. And the BARs will have to beat. That's Sauber. Marquez will have to beat. Weber will have to beat. Like, there's no threat to us. They are just too far back anyway, so even if we have to pit again, they wouldn't be a threat to the Prost. So we are in the clear, assuming there are no engine failures or stuff like that. We shall be fine, but the, the, if there's any unfortunate thing, it's the fact that Ralph is going to score at least two points. Which means if he scores eight in the next episode, assuming Panis wins both races... That's gonna be our championship over, at least the drivers. With this result, obviously, we will take the lead of the constructors. But you know what? I I also like to win the the the, 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 the driver championship. But you can't get everything. Before we go, I need to check. Uh, yeah, Kimi is certainly one stopping. His stop was long, not as long as Kulhar, but Kulhar had an issue, so there's a bit of difference there. Uh, same with Bottom, because of course, as I mentioned, Bottom was in the points, he's dropped down to 13, but he should climb up one or two positions. Bert is also one-stopping, and that's about it. Of course, our boys are one-stopping, but their first thing was so long, it doesn't look like it. It's raining now. Okay, we don't have rain points equipped, and that's definitely gonna benefit Ralph Schumacher, which is very unfortunate. I did not want to benefit him. Well, he's on a tree stop, so he's gonna have to climb back. But, in, but anyway, I'd rather it not change conditions because then Ralph is gonna have an increasing pace. And maybe there goes Tarso Marcus. Into the, didn't we say Marcus didn't have to do that anymore? I got confused. Anyway, uh, this has been the Health Race Report, and now I'm gonna cut the recording here. And well, hopefully the rain stays like, like this and it then cuts out and there's no change in weather conditions because that's gonna sadden me it is the final lap we're halfway around the lap at these panaces and well in the end we were unopposed and Kimi got very close to Alonso there he, he, he please no anyway Panis is got absolutely completing his part of the deal he's going to win the Italian Grand Prix from hopefully his teammate Fernando Alonso Speaking of, let me just increase that, max that out. So Panis wins the Italian Grand Prix. Second, it is a dogfight. Let me let's let's just look at it. Kimi Kimi got very close, but he's not gonna do it. Fernando Alonso finishes second ahead of Kimi Raikkonen. Great result. That's the first one-two we got. No, France. We got a one-two in France. Fourth is going to be, I think, Mark Weber. Sixth, uh, fifth. Sorry, it's gonna be David Coulthard. Good for us. Um uh, what else? Sixth is Giancarlo Fisichella, seventh Enrique Bernoldi, and eighth it will be Ralph Schumacher. So this time around Ralph does score a point. So it's going to cut away into our little like leverage we have. He can only score now nine points from here on out, but uh, Ferrari is collapsing a bit. Ferrari is collapsing, and we need to take advantage of every single every, every little bit of collapse Ferrari has we need to take advantage of it confirmation that Olivier Panis wins the Italian Grand Prix from Fernando Alonso Kimi Raikkonen in third Mark Webber fourth with David Coulthard third, uh, fifth physical 6th Bernoldi seventh and Raul Schumacher eighth with 
uh, everyone else a lap down. You have Montoya, Marquez, Zarazan, Button, 12th. Button, 12th. Pedro de, Rosa, Pedro de la Rosa, 13th. And here is the rest of them. Eddie Irvine and Heinz Harold Frensen took each other out. Alessi had a gearbox issue, but uh, Verstappen blew his engine. And, of course, Barrichello uh, dramatically DNF from the lead. Which he took, like, a few seconds. For a few seconds, for one lap, then he DNF. Thankfully. Uh, Michael Schumacher finishes three laps down. Bad things happen to Michael in this race. I'm not sure how, why. But more important than that, despite us running illegal driver rates, we weren't disqualified. Which means that that little risk, it ended up paying off. Because our soft tires were effectively indestructible. So, Raul Schumacher now... In the of course still in the lead of the championship 79 points over uh, four points over David Coulthard 75 nine uh, can I count right um, 11 11 points over Oliver Panis with just 20 to play for so again if Ralph scores nine more points than Panis assuming Pan Panis wins out he is out of the championship so. We still need to, uh, Panis still needs to win out. Alonso is out of the championship, unfortunately. We had to sacrifice him. Uh, actually, he's not. He could still win if he wins out, but um, he will be out if Ralph scores at least seven more points. So, yeah, even Alonso could win this championship, but I uh, we are focusing on Panis. It, 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 it's obvious. As for the constructors, we finally, finally take the lead of the World Constructors Championship off of McLaren, who is 9 points behind, and Ferrari, who is 13 points behind. Williams is effectively out of the championship. Yes, there are 36 points at play, and they could win the, the Constructors Championship, of course, but I doubt they will. I really doubt they will. Three wins for Panis, two pole, poles for Alonso so far, two races to go, all to play for. What a year this has been. Uh, the complaints and the research test, I actually forgot to use research. So I will, I, will, I will check that out in a moment. We might be penalized, you are correct, but we weren't on this occasion and I am pretty happy with that. Okay, good. I don't, don't, I don't care about the unused advantage, we cannot use it in 2004. The bank has confirmed our final loan repayment and has invited us to take further borrowing. We're not borrowing more money. Anyway, you might have remembered that we took a loan a bunch of years ago and we have finally repaid it, which is why it allowed us to, I don't know. It was on year one, I think. Prob yeah, it was on year one, right at the end, so we could build some cards. And we got that, and the, the, the loan was on a three-year uh, configuration. So we just paid that off. And we've spent, just this year, we've spent four million in banking. That's not gonna be an issue anymore. So we're gonna make even more money next year. That said, we do need to spend some money because um, 15 million in the bank is not doing much. We need to invest it in something. And that will be a new factory. So, good. Good, right. So, what can I do before I end this episode? Uh, build spare parts, of course, and that hasn't gone through, dang it. Okay, uh, accept that. We're gonna deal with that in a moment. Uh, in a moment, in the next episode. Take off that. Uh, dump. We found something on the Williams. We found active suspension, but just a level two, never mind. Let's put, of course, points here in rain because. Uh, the European Grand Prix is wet and we need as much performance in the wet as possible because if you remember on the previous season we absolutely destroyed everyone in the European and Japanese Grand Prix simply because a bunch of rain points were deployed and our car ended up very good in the wet and we just destroyed everyone. That's the same thing we're gonna replicate on this one. Bunch of rain points which I'm gonna get through setup and we're gonna destroy everyone. Speaking of things that we're doing, we're doing research. Because, of course, that will boost the the progress of the active suspension. And that will be it for this episode. But before I forget, in case I forget, we're taking off that level 5 traction control. We were going to need it for just one race. And that race has been completed. So we don't need it anymore. 
So we're done. Actually, now that I think of it, before we go, I'm gonna turn this 2F engine into a 2G engine. I could have done this in the previous previous episode, but I actually forgot I could do this. I'm gonna take some rigidity and put them into response. The reason for that? Less errors in qualifying. So the 2G will be our qualifying engine for Japan, and the 2F the uh, qualifying engine and race engines for Europe and Japan. Well, just race engine. Anyway, I have burned enough of your time. I hope you enjoyed this particular episode. Comment, like, subscribe, the usual the usual YouTuber stuff, and hopefully I will see you in the season finale of the 2004 season, where we could very well steal both championship in the in the 11th hour. Uh, but not even the 11th hour, the 12th hour. Hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you there. Goodbye.